I'm Steven, and I'm gonna show you all of my bubble designs today. What is bubble knitting? How do you do bubble knitting? It's really easy, and I love stitch patterns where you get a lot of impact by doing something very, very simple. So if you wanna skip ahead in this video, there's a timestamp down below. You can skip ahead to the technique, and I'll show you exactly how to do the bubble stitch. But if you're still watching, I need to show you some samples. I love show and tell, and I have a lot of bubble designs because when I get addicted to something, I put it in everything. So the Slip Stravaganza blanket is DK weight, and it has a lot of bubbles in one of the sections. I'm wearing the new bubble cardigan. This is a fingering weight cardigan, all in bubble stitch with a border, a non-bubble border. Um, we have a bubble shawl. This is probably the easiest um, pattern to get introduced to this technique. So I'd recommend doing the bubble shawl for something easy. If you like lots of color and brioche, bubbles and brioche. This has bubbles and brioche, if you couldn't tell by the name of the pattern. This pattern has a whole video where I show you how to cast on, how to do brioche. So you can find that linked down below if you want to learn how to do this shawl. If you haven't done brioche before, you can do this shawl. I made a video to show you how to do it. So let's get a close up look at these samples. What's beautiful about the bubble stitch is that it looks just as good on the front as it does on the back. I love these little V's that you get from that technique. So the Slip Stravaganza blanket is knit with DK weight yarn and this bubble section, you can go crazy with all of your color pops. You can use some fluffy yarns, DK weight, you could take your fingering weight yarns and hold them two together. What if you held two different colors together? <gasps> you could have a marled bubble color pop. So the one thing about bubbles is that they pop. Bubbles pop. You blow them and they pop. So you have to make your colors pop as well, okay? There's no excuse for a sad bubble. You need to electrify your palette and just, yeah, go wild. If you don't know what color to add next, just don't look, just reach into your bag and, oh, pink, okay. Steven said that that was okay. The bubble shawl is much easier. So if you've never done bubble knitting before, knit the shawl. It starts really small at the corner. This is the cast on corner of the shawl. And then you increase with this bubble texture. So you really get a lot of stitches and a lot of pattern repeats to practice and add color pops as you go. If you wanna knit this bubble shawl, I would get two skeins of the main color and get a few contrast color pops. I think this would be a gorgeous palette with like a sandy brown as the main color or maybe even like a dark blue, like a navy blue for the main color. Two skeins of the main color and lots of pops to knit the bubble shawl. This is the bubbles and brioche shawl. So you get these really fun, colorful bubble sections to give you a break between the brioche and you also have a garter stitch break. So this pattern is really fun for you brioche lovers because it's always changing. It always keeps you looking forward to the next color and the next section. And the back side of this is quite reversible and beautiful to look at as well. And finally, we have the Texture Time Shawl. This was the very first design where I used that bubble technique for the border of the shawl. And I just love how it frames the different stitch patterns and shapes of Texture Time. When you work the border of the Texture Time Shawl with the bubbles, you make a folded hem. Look at that. The edge folds over to make a really subtle scalloped detail to your texture time shawl. The bubble stitch occurs as you work the first row or round of your new color. So I'm knitting with my new contrast color and the instructions will say knit one into the stitch from four rows below. So I'm knitting into this stitch from one, two, three, four rows below. Pull the yarn through and take that stitch off the needle. And this is the fun part, you get to unravel the stitches. All right, let's do that again. I'm gonna knit three, knit one into the stitch from four rows below. One, two, three, four. 
go into the middle of the stitch, pull the yarn through, and take it off the left needle. And look at this fun unraveling. And look at that, we're already starting to get new bubble pops with that previous color. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, knit one, two, three, Knit one into the stitch from four rows below. One, two, three, four. Dive into the center of the stitch. Pull the yarn through. Take that stitch off the needle. And you can pull that bubble stitch pretty tight. It doesn't have to be too loose, because when you pull the yarn tight for that bubble stitch, it will make those bubbles pop a bit better. So continue working the pattern, whether it's a pattern worked flat or in the round, it's the same technique, working that bubble stitch on the right side of your work. Well, I hope that was fun. Bubble knitting is super easy. If you want some more practice on this stitch, there's links down below for my slip stravaganza blanket. In this video, I also go over the bubble stitch and you'll learn how to cast on the center of the blanket and the bubbles and brioche. You're gonna learn more bubble knitting and brioche knitting for this shawl. So pick your bubble project. If you don't know where to start, go with the bubble shawl. This is the easiest one. And you can make this shawl as big as you want. That's what I love about a lot of my shawl, um, sideways shawls, is that you cast on and you just keep increasing and oh, I wanna bind off and you just bind off or you keep going and make it as big as you want. So share all your progress on Instagram with hashtag Westnits, and you can find all my projects and patterns on Ravelry.com.